if you have a cell phone or a pager, you might want to turn it off or set it to stun. Um, people call at the strangest times. They don't know you're here. Unless, of course, Celia's calling, and then that would be all right. Begin with Psalm 121. Esai enai el haharim me ayin yavo ezri. Ezri me im adonai ose shamayim va'aretz. Al yitain lamot raglecha, al yanum shamrecha. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael. Adonai shomrecha, adonai tzircha al yad yiminecha. Yomam hashemesh lo yekeka ve'arech belayla. Adonai shmarcha mikol ra yishmor et nafshecha. Adonai shmar tzedcha avuecha me'ata va'ad olam. I lift up my eyes to the mountains, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way, your protector will not slumber. See the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. He will guard your soul. You're going and you're coming now and forever. Death has taken our beloved, our dearly departed Celia Patnikovsky. And so friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Celia's love that united many in life and which death cannot sever. For her companionship that was shared along life's path and which now continues through the tenderness of memory for the gifts of her heart and her mind, which brought joy and happiness, and which now also are a precious remembrance. For all of these and more, we give our thanks to God. We continue again with a psalm from Sefer Tehillim from the Book of Psalms, which tells us of our kinship with the Creator. In light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Together let us recite in the English the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is a privilege to call forward to eulogize Celia to eulogize Booby, our dear granddaughter Madison and granddaughter Brooke, and to be followed by her, her stepson, her son, no, grandson, no, son, yeah, Ken, works even better that way. So let's call forward Madison and Brooke, please. My grandma sure was a character, and I'm sure everyone here has special memories of her. I'd like to take this opportunity to honor her life by sharing some of mine. Celia Patner became Bubby Seal at age 47, 
and at age 52, following the death of my grandfather, she became a best friend and companion to her five-year-old granddaughter. Or perhaps it was the other way around. I became best friend and companion to her in her time of need. Either way, we both enjoyed time together. Sleeping over became almost a weekly occurrence, and we developed some really funny traditions. She would often indulge me in premium steaks bought fresh from her butcher, and she would season them to perfection and serve them to me on wooden planks. And I think the story goes, she somehow acquired them from some fine Canadian restaurant. And she convinced me that its steaks tasted better off of these planks. After that, she let me eat as many Don Herman pickles as I wanted to. And then we topped the meal off with a freshly defrosted fine Entenmann's dessert. <clears throat> Bubby always uh, had manicured nails and she was desperately trying to pass this desire on to me. Her requests were always met with resistance though. She kept trying. I can still hear her saying, come on Brookie, why don't you let me paint your toes? And like most grandmas, Bubby wanted to be sure that her granddaughter had mastered the important life skills. Now, she didn't teach me how to iron or to sew, but she made sure I knew how to write a check before I graduated kindergarten. <laughs> Bubby also took me everywhere. She even took me to a late night Bobby Vinton concert. All I remember is falling asleep during the opening comedy act and being very disappointed we weren't gonna see Michael Jackson. She also took me to work I know that sounds kind of ordinary, but I'm fairly confident I was the only kid in town whose bubby owned a bar. And going to work didn't mean sitting at a sterile desk and pu pushing papers and answering phones, but rather I had unlimited access to the bowling machine, jukebox, glass Coke bottles, and the undivided attention from a woman named Anita, who she called her barmaid. Oh, it was Juanita. Oh. She also trusted my opinion with home decorating decisions, and to this day, the peach bed comforter I selected 35 years ago remains in place on the guest bed. After a few years, Bubby became more settled in her life as a widow, and I became more interested in normal child activities. But one thing always remained constant. Bubby spoiled me rotten. She started going on vacations with her friends, but every time she would pack an empty piece of luggage to make sure she had enough space for all the gifts she was gonna bring back for me. And every year before school started, she would take me clothes shopping and would literally fill my closet with a whole new wardrobe. And whenever she anticipated that I had a need or a want, she would make sure it was fulfilled. I just realized yesterday that I have yet to receive one of the last gifts that she purchased for me. Every year in October, she would call me and ask me if I wanted Honey Bell oranges. And they always came in late January. And I still haven't gotten them yet. But you can see, Bubby was always trying to take care of me. And I can go on forever talking about how much she spoiled me. But most importantly, her presence here on earth helped to create eight new lives that she got to bless in her own way. Now, all that we can do is offer her a blessing that her soul, by the mercy of God, may rest peacefully for all of eternity. As the youngest grandchild, I didn't experience the same Bubby memories as my older sisters did. However, I can promise that I received the same amount of spoiling. When I mentioned I wanted an iPad, Bubby took me to the Apple Store the next day. And she didn't settle for just a normal iPad. She had to get me the fully loaded 64 gigabyte iPad. Oh. <clears throat> Whenever Bubby felt I needed more clothes, which was basically every season, she took me schmiring, which is what she called a shopping spree. 
Bubby never settled, never looked at a price tag, never refused, but most importantly, never withdrew any of her love. It wasn't what Bubby bought me that made her the best grandma I could ever ask for. It was how much she cared about me, and everyone for that matter. Bubby was my number one fan. She supported me in every play and performance, and would knock down anyone in her way of watching me. Whenever I met or saw anyone Bubby interacted with, they already knew about me and every accomplishment I'd ever obtained. This happened to me today also. <laughs> her endless support always pushed me to do my very best, and her pride made me feel so unbelievably special. Her grandchildren were truly her life. She made sure we knew how much she loved us and did anything in her power to ensure our happiness. But beyond her treasured grandchildren and great-grandchildren, she was really everyone's puppy. She loved all of our friends, from hugging them and kissing them to welcoming them in her home both in Florida and here. She genuinely cared about everyone that was important to us. But Bubby was definitely a fiery one. She threatened to beat up anyone I ever had an issue with, and there is no doubt in my mind that she could take down anyone. She never ceased to throw out a witty, a witty comeback. But behind that sarcasm was an immense strength a huge heart and the classiest woman I've ever known. So although schmutzky games in our lives will never be the same, I know she's up there already styled up and sending her love to each and every one of us. Now Michael and Maya asked me to read their letters that they wrote to her, so I'm gonna start with Maya's. Dear Bubby, I hope you're in peace. You're a kind, loving Bubby. Wherever you are, I hope you are with God. When I'm asleep, I will always see you in my dreams. You are in my heart forever. I will always think of you, and I will always miss you. From Michael. Dear Bubby, I will really miss you. I hope that wherever you are, you will be happy, not suffering, and peaceful. I hope you had an amazing life full of joy and happiness. I also hope that everyone was kind to you. Everyone loves you. Your memory will be a blessing, and your memory will also be remembered. Whenever we play Schmutzki, we will think of you. You were, and still are, a great grandma. You made us believe in ourselves. I love you so much. We will remember that you used to call dad a cheater in Schmutzki and that you used to yell at the waiters in restaurants. <laughs> we will miss you forever. To those words spoken as a prayer, really, let us say amen. Ken, would you come forward, please? have anything as eloquently prepared but uh, just from the heart um, it's not often uh, a parent acquires a child who is age 41 but seal took me in uh, when she married my father as her own uh, I was never a stepson always a son and I always enjoyed uh, driving her car to Florida every year it gave us a chance to spend the week together down there get the apartment set up and uh, I learned a lot of uh, interesting stories from her including her days from the bar as Brooke said uh, um, and uh, one of my favorites was uh, one time she was going to rent a bus and take all her regulars to see the Indians play a game uh, I think down at the old stadium and her bar was down uh, Euclid Avenue so it was about a 20 minute trip and she had a keg of beer for them in the bus, which she expected to last both ways. She said they didn't even get halfway there and the keg was empty. And she said they continued to drink beer at the game, and when they came back, they wanted her to open the bar. And she told them, get the hell out of here and you know, go back to your families. I mean, that's just, just the, the way she would handle it. Uh, I also want to say I'm, how grateful I am for the life she gave my father in their retirement years. I don't think he would have had such a, a nice retirement if not for her. Uh, I, I'm sure he never would have uh, spent his winters in Florida and, and know how much they grew to enjoy their life down there. Uh, and they both, my father and Seal, uh, left us a legacy uh, of uh, giving us uh, the whole Westler family. And uh, it means a lot. Thank you.
also those words spoken as a prayer. Together let us say amen. So we gather to fulfill the solemn obligation of paying our respects to the memory of your dearly departed Celia, her, her Yiddish name, Zisel Bad Berach Chaika. Zisel, like, you know, it's like sweet. This assembly of friends and loved ones is a comfort and a support to the sorrowing family. She was a feisty woman. If she loved you, she loved you. And you were lucky she loved you. Because if she loved you, she would do pretty much anything for you. If she didn't love you, well, then things didn't go so well. But thankfully, probably everybody in this room, she loved you. As some of the family spoke about her yesterday, it was a reminder of an upcoming Torah portion. In two Shabbatot from now, we read Parashat Bo. And in Parashat Bo, it's the third Torah portion in Sefer Shemot in the book of Exodus. The portion speaks of faith and a jump in and do something kind of attitude, which characterized our ancestors after they were redeemed from Egyptian slavery. In Exodus chapter 12, after the 10th plague, which was the death of the firstborn of man and beast in Egypt, we learn our ancestors departed from Egypt hastily. Beginning with verse 31 in chapter 12. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron in the night and said, Up, depart from among my people, you and the Israelites, Go worship the Lord, as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and, and be gone. And also, be a blessing unto me. The Egyptians urged the people on, impatient to have them leave the country, for they said, we shall all be dead. So, our ancestors, so the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls wrapped in their cloaks upon their shoulders, and they they baked unleavened cakes of dough that they took out of Egypt. It was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt. They could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. So let's think about this for a moment. Our ancestors were in Egypt for 430 years. They were in slavery for 210 years. Even if slavery isn't comfortable, it's a place to live. You're settled. You're there. Everything that you have is there. And so they must have been terrified at the prospect of all of a sudden getting up and going. And it says they were getting ready to march in the desert and they didn't prepare any food. But they did it anyway. They had faith and they jumped in to do something. That's the type of attitude in many ways that was Celia. All right, she had an attitude, she had faith. But this doesn't mean that she had indifference to danger. There was a difficult, it was a difficult life in many ways. She was married, her hus first husband died. She was married, her second husband died. There were many times of difficulty. But this difficulty didn't cripple her. It didn't preclude her from taking decisive action to better her life. And let's not forget about the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. That was Celia. She was born in Cleveland on June 13, 1929, to Ben and Ida. And over these many years, she was part of a large, extended, blended, loving, and Meshuggah family. I mean, who among us doesn't have Meshuggahs in that way? Really. We have so many people in our families and in our lives. She was an avid weaver of family. She did not want to leave anybody out. She had a Yom Kippur break the fast annually that served kind of like, as Marcy said, as a, a going away party because after that she'd go down to Florida. So blessings of family. She was one of, she, ha she has an older sister Molly who's in Toronto, Celia of blessed memory, and then there was a younger baby girl who passed away very early on. So there were three originally. Her husband, first husband, Mike Patner, they were married February 6, 1948, and when he passed away in 1983, 
They had 35 years of marriage, the time of his passing. Through that marriage, two children, Leslie of blessed memory and Marcy, Marcy married to Arlie. Now we have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Granddaughter Brooke, she's married to Vic. Corey, Corey's married to John and Madison. And great-grandchildren, I'll try to pronounce this correctly, Brielle, close enough. Michael, Mayer, and Maya, Malka. After Michael passed away in 1983, after Mike passed away in 1983, she met Elliot Kofsky. She and Elliot got married October 1991, and they shared almost 12 years together at the time of his passing in uh, July of 2003. And he brought with him the blessings of Ken and his wife Sue and grandchildren Stephen. Stephen is married to Megan. Michael is married to Lisa and great-grandchildren Kanye and Haley. Is that everybody? With the exception of her longest friend, Hinda Apple. Hinda and Celia have known each other since, I think you said four months, or birth, pretty close, because their families are very close and work together, and they've known each other all of these years. Celia was precious, and it's a tremendous loss to Hinda as well as to everyone else. When they got married, when Celia and Mike got married, they got married at the Alcazar, if you remember where that is, the Alcazar Hotel, and we're trying to figure out who did the wedding, and Hinda said it was Rabbi Rosenthal. So there isn't anybody around to dispute that, but if, uh, and something about Mike, when they went on the first date, he and Celia, he rode a bicycle over to the house for his first date, which is tremendous. She was uh, a loving person, and she was a feisty person, and if you had her in your corner, you were in very, very good shape. She was also very good with, with numbers and with money, and so I'm wearing a number two pencil because she could, you know, sharpen the pencil and do the math and do all of that. She probably could do a lot of it and it's in her head. The family had a picture of her three weeks ago, and she was as she usually was in the sense of being uh, perky and awake and doing things. And within the last three weeks, things just took a turn. It, went south, so to speak, uh, not necessarily to Florida, but you took her to Florida so that she could go visit there. And within the last few weeks, uh, everything just kind of shut down. And as sad as it is, it's a blessing that if a loved one is going to go, that the loved one goes relatively quickly. Most of the time in our lives, you want the person to be around, you want to say goodbye, you'd like it to be a few weeks, it's usually much longer than that, and the deterioration is much more painful to to watch. So um, she breathed her last on Sunday morning, and now there is no pain, there's no deterioration, there's just rest and wholeness and peace. Just like Shabbat is a time of rest, so for Celia this is a time of rest for her soul. Judaism teaches that her soul is returning to God to be with the souls of her family and deceased relatives and ancestors. And the soul goes to a time called uh, Olam Haba. We learn this from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. The dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Olam Haba is not a place. This is a place. The cemetery where we will lay her body to rest is a place, but Olam Haba is an eternal time. And we, we have confidence that you know, God will judge her soul favorably and that God will take care of her in this uh, entirely spiritual time, Olam Haba. The, the family has allowed us to send along a couple of prayer books with her in the casket because not only is it a mitzvah to escort the body of your loved one to its final resting place, but also holy books of our tradition. 
So as you, you think of her, let us thank God for the gift of this long life. 88 years is, a, it's, in terms of numbers, pretty good. We would have hoped for many more, but only, only in health. Once it starts to, to go, we don't want our loved ones just hanging around. And she wouldn't have wanted just to hang around. She wouldn't have been able to, to, to be feisty if she was just hanging around. And so uh, whatever this schmushki game is, uh, we should all learn how to play it. And uh, the family should play it and do a little bit of uh, whatever she would say. You should chime in with what she would say. Um, one more thing. Um, Arlie was uh, Saint Arlie to, uh, to Celia uh, because he would go to the store and pick up stuff. Uh, she was on the phone with her family a lot. as the silence now will be uh, a bit deafening because you don't get those phone calls. While you're getting the phone calls, you're saying to yourself, oi, another phone call. And then when the phone calls stop, it's like you're waiting for the phone to ring. So uh, call one another. And let us be kinder and more thoughtful of others, and let us do this in, uh, in Celia's loving memory. And so we say, with tears in our eyes, words from the first chapter of the book of Job. Adonai Natan, Vadonai Lakach, Yehi Shem Adonai Mavarach. The Lord hath given, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And let us say, Amen. Ose Shalom Bim Romav, Uya Ase Shalom Aleinu. Ve al kohol Yisrael, ve imru yimru amen. Yahse shalom, yahse shalom, shalom aleinu. Ve al kol Yisrael, yahse shalom, yahse shalom. Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael. May God who causes peace to reign in the high heavens, cause peace to reign upon us, upon all Israel, and upon the soul of our dearly departed Celia Patner Kofsky. And let us say, Amen. Please rise for El Malei Rachamim. Into your care, O oh God, we entrust the spirit of our dear Celia. For you keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, O oh God, are with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. El male rachamim, shochein bamromim, hametzem nuchanechona, tacha kanfe hashchina, im kroshi mutorim, kezohara ki amasirim. Et nishmat zisu bat berach v'chayka shalach al olama ba'al harachamim yasti reha b'seta kenafav leholamim vayitzror b'sror hachayim et nishmata. Adonai hu nachalata v'tanu ach b'shalom al mishkava v'nomar Amen Compassionate God 
eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Zisel Bat Berach Vachaika, our dear Celia Patnikovsky. She has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in the shadow of your wings, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. Before we leave in procession to go to Mount Olive Cemetery, afterward, if you're not going to the cemetery with us, we'll be at uh, Marcy and Arlie's house in about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half from now. The family will be gathered there. It's at 5850 Deepwood Trail in Solon. Uh, put it in your GPS. I don't know how I'll be able to tell you how to get there, but 5850 Deepwood Trail. Family will be there tonight. Family will be there tomorrow from tomorrow from uh, two to two to four and six to eight. And the family will be there Thursday from two to four and six to eight. Um, at our synagogue, Temple Israel near Tamid, Celia will be on the Kaddishes for the next four weeks, and we'll say Kaddish every Friday night, whether any family members can attend or not. She'll also be when we have Wednesday afternoon school. Kids need the reps in the Kaddish. We are going to say Kaddish for Celia on Wednesday afternoons, and we'll say Kaddish for her on Sunday mornings as well. And now we'll call in the, uh, the funeral directors here, and they'll give us instructions as we go to Mount Olive. Thank you. 